Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to another COVID-19 video. In this episode, I think I'll call this episode uh, Peking Duck Quacking. Peking Duck Quacking. Uh, seems like uh, there's a couple things going on. First of all, uh, here's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, WHO made a statement recently in the news. Welcome to my Sunday edition of COVID-19. Uh, WHO recently made an announcement or maybe made a statement that asymptomatic infected people rarely, uh, that transmission from asymptomatic people is rare. Uh, a lot of pushback from that. Um, seems like there are some dispute of whether how true that was. Um, so I'll be talking just a, a little bit about that. I may, maybe I'll talk about it right now. Um, so apparently uh, a statement was made and uh, a lot of people pushed back on it. I don't think that's true. I think whether you're asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic, you're shedding viruses and anytime you shed viruses, those viruses can infect other people. So uh, very disturbing some of the comments coming out of the WHO here. I'm glad America has defunded the WHO. <laughs> so defund the WHO. Done. All right. Uh, other thing I'm going to talk about is this is where the Peking duck quacking title comes in. Uh, it seems like Beijing has shut down another quote unquote seafood market after many people have tested positive for COVID-19. This is in Beijing or Peking. Peking duck. All I can say, if it walks like a duck, moves like a duck, quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. So, so it seems like um, it seems like a Wuhan 2.0. So I guess we could call this Beijing 2.0. Um, we'll see how how bad this gets. There. They're shutting down schools. They're shutting down the whole seafood market. Apparently, this whole "quote unquote" seafood market is the largest market in China. And so uh, we'll see what happens then. Um, is that the second wave? No, I don't think that's the second wave. I think that's just a continuation of the first outbreak in China that is never, never uh, contained, never defeated. It's always been there, always will be there. And it'll get much worse as fall and winter come along. Recent models kind of show that. I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, other thing we're going to be talking about is uh, increase in 21 states in America. There seems to be an increase, which I don't know if they're related to the protest or not. I think they're just more related to um, more social interactions going on, despite the fact people are social distancing or self-isolating and even wearing masks. It's inevitable. Uh, the spread is still continuing. I never, I never denied or never said that the spread was going to stop. I just think that during the summer, the UV rays will kill the virus, okay, better than during the spring and winter or the fall and winter, where the UV rays are less, less. And so, if you're outside and uh, contacting surfaces, you, you may be okay versus during the fall and winter where if you touch surfaces, you have, may have a better chance of getting infected. But I think it's more social interaction more than anything else. And uh, another thing, it looks like the best way to avoid transmission is to wear a face mask. That was in the news, people. I remember <laughs> face masks or masks don't help. Don't help. Uh, maybe it doesn't help you from getting infected, but wearing masks, everyone wearing masks or facial covering will help reduce the transmission. I know that for a fact. And so now uh, people are accepting that concept, but it's kind of too late. I still wear my N95 mask. There's no doubt. I, I still wear my N95 mask with a buff a 95 mask, surgical mask over the N95 mask, and then another buff over everything else with a hat and safety 
glasses on. Not goggles yet, but I think that's good enough to protect me, and it has. So I will continue to do that until I see fit to change. Maybe I'll go full retard and wear all my PPE gear, or maybe I'll go less and go full retard the other way and not wear anything. Who knows? All right, so let's let's get into the numbers real quick. Uh, two million, two million people have been infected. We still got a hundred times more to go to get a herd immunity. At this point, I really think that herd immunity is the goal because the vaccine will just come a little too late, in my opinion. And we have over 115,000 people who have passed away from COVID-19, the Chinese coronavirus, the CCP virus, all right? Uh, let's just take a look at the numbers. So it is flattening. It is flattening down here. It's bottoming, I should say. It, it is slightly decreasing, but the recent numbers show an increase in cases. Don't know if it's a protest. Don't know if it's just natural because the spread of the de of the virus is going through communities where it didn't have the opportunity to spread because of the stay-at-home lockdown. Now that people are going out, states are opening up, it could be spreading naturally, but at a slower rate. You know, people talk about spikes. Well, if you compare it to New York, New Jersey, Michigan, Chicago, where they had 4,000 daily for a couple days, um, you know, the, the quote-unquote spikes we're seeing now, they're really nothing. Um, so we can never get rid of this virus. It will stay with us for a while. So, I mean, California, I'll give you an example. California has just slowly but surely just is just increasing that is they've never stopped they're still going through the first wave so there's some states that will just continue to go on to, uh, fall and winter comes by you'll see what i'm talking about uh, i'll just kind of skip to this here i'm not going to make this episode too long uh, here is texas and it's been updated june uh, what i did notice was that they've extended their forecast here this is a total death they've extended their forecast all the way to october 1st instead of october August 1st so they've added some the winter months here and you and if you look if you look at the daily deaths here this is kind of smoothed out this has been smoothed out it's usually jagged up and down but it's been smoothed out averaged and they're expecting a decrease during the summer which would mean less infections or the population that is most vulnerable have already been infected so they're out of the picture in other words they're dead so you're looking at the healthy population getting infected and not dying. But if you look as they go into September and October, you see this increase. Well, they're projecting fall and winter to have an increase in probably infections and also death. So they're, they're, they're anticipating the same thing I'm anticipating, which is fall and winter have an increase in infections due to UV rays. All right. You have less UV rays. It will kill the virus less more contact all right contaminated surfaces on my in my opinion same thing here you see the increase here in, in expected infections testing will go up as well uh, another thing testing has been going on and here social distancing they're anticipating anticipating social distancing to be less less social distancing and so i think they're trying to reopen everything up and at a slower rate of infection to manage and mitigate the hospitalization so the hospital system won't completely fall apart. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just conclude this episode here. It's not going to be a long episode. There's really not much going on with COVID-19. It's just a slow burn, and we're all going to be burning together. Some will burn more. Some will burn less. Some have really burned really bad to the ground. Uh, protests probably didn't help. So thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like, share, comment. Until next time, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>